Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can validate the size of the file before you upload it. So I'll show you how you can do this for a single file and also for multiple files. So for the markup in this example, I have an input element of type file so that a user can select the file locally. And this is embedded in a form element with a button of type submit on it. So when a user clicks this button, it's going to fire the submit event on the form. And I want to do validation at two points here when the user initially selects a file. So a user immediately knows if the file is too big. And also when the user tries to submit the form. So I'll check the file size again then. And if it is over the limit, prevent an upload from occurring. Now, the final thing that I have in this form is a div with an ID of info where I'm going to be printing information for the user about whether the file they have selected is above or below the file size limit. And in JavaScript, I've already selected the input element by its attribute of type file and also the user info element where I'm printing information for the user. So for the validation, I'm going to be doing it inside a dedicated function. And I'm going to be calling this if a user selects a new file or clicks the submit button on the form. And the first thing I want to do inside this function is to check whether a file exists on the input element. So if there is one, then it's going to be available on the files property where files are stored in an array like list. So for a single file input, like we have in the markup, the index position of the file is always going to be zero. So I will return to adjust this example for multiple files. But first, let's work through the example for a single file. So I want to check whether a file exists on the input element, because it's possible that a user has clicked the submit button without selecting a file first. So I can check for the absence of value on the file reference like this. And if there is no file selected, then I'm going to create an error saying no file selected. And I'm not throwing an error here. I'm going to be deciding whether to throw an error when I call the validate size function. But what I am going to do here is to create a reference to the error and I'm going to print the error message in the user info box. So I'll set the text content of user info to error and the message is available on the message property. And finally, if there is no file, I'm going to exit out of the validate size function by calling return and setting the return value to the error that I created, which I will handle when I call the validate size function. So if there is no file, then code execution will stop here because there's no need for further validation. Okay, so for the next bit of code after the if block, we can be sure that a file has been selected and to check whether it is too big, we need two values. So the first is the file size limit. The second is the size of the user selected file. And these both need to be expressed in the same units so that they can be compared. So in this example, the file size limit is two megabytes. So I'm going to express that here in kilobytes and to get size of the file that has been selected, you can get that on the size property on file and it's stored there in bytes. So to convert from bytes to kilobytes, bytes by 1024 and then check if the value of size is greater than the value of limit, then the file that has been selected is too big. In this case, we want to create an error, notify the user and exit out the function, returning the error that we create. So these are exactly the same steps that we followed if no file was selected. So I'm going to copy that code into this if block. All I need to do is to change the error message and I'm going to use backticks to create the error message this time because I'm going to insert the size of the file that the user has selected into the message. So this time the message will be far too big and then I'll print the size of the file that has been selected 
in megabytes. So in size, I already have the size of the file in kilobytes. And to get it as megabytes, I can divide that value by 1000. And to make sure that there are no more than two digits after the decimal point, I'm going to apply the two fix method here, passing in a value of two. And now I'll add an else block. So this will run if size is not greater than limit, meaning that the size of the selected file is two megabytes or less, and we're happy to go ahead with uploading it. So I'm not going to create an error this time. I'm just going to let the user know that the file size is okay. And I'm going to return a value of false. So you might have noticed now that if the file size is too big, then this function returns an error and otherwise it returns false. So we'll be using this return value to handle the result of this function, which we'll be calling above now. Okay, so the first situation when I want to call the validate size function is in response to a user selecting a new file on the input element. So I can do that by adding an event listener to input listening out or a change event. When that occurs, the function I'm defining is going to be run. And inside there, I'm simply going to be calling the validate size function. Now, something you could do here is to check the return value of the validate size function and throw an error if it returns an error, but it's not essential here because no code is being processed after calling validate size. So we don't need to prevent an upload from occurring if the user has simply selected a file. So I'm going to leave it as it is and we can test this. So I'll select a file here that is within the size limit. This image is within it. So I get the message file size, okay. If I select a file that is too big, then I get the message file too big. And it also prints the size of the file that I've selected in megabytes. Now I also want to call the validate size function when the user hits the submit button. And if the file is too big, when that occurs, then I want to prevent the file from being uploaded. So to add an event listener to that button, I can actually add an event listener to the form. So I'll select that with the query selector and I'm listening out for the event submit on form. So if that occurs, the first thing I want to do is to prevent the HTML default behavior of submitting the form. That includes a page refresh. So I can do that by calling prevent default on the event object that I have available. I'm doing that because I want to handle the file upload with JavaScript, making it conditional upon the size of the file. So the next thing I'm going to do here is call the validate size function. And if I wanted to, I could also call here other validation functions that I have in my code. And after validation, it's time to make the upload. So in this case, I'm just going to be printing a message inside the user info element so that we know whether this bit of code has run or not, where in practice you would actually be making the upload. So I'll make the message for the user here, upload starting. Now we don't actually want this bit of code to run if there was an error when running validate size. So we want to throw an error if it returns one. So we can check that with an if statement. So if the value of res is a positive value, then this if block will run. We know if it's a positive value, then it must be an error. In that case, we want to throw res. And in that case, that means that code execution will stop and we won't reach the upload starting bit of code down here. So if the user selected file is too big, then the upload will be prevented. So let's test this now. First of all, I'll select the file that is within the size limit. So first of all, it tells me that the file size is okay. And then when I hit the submit button, you see that the upload code is running. Now, if I try again with the file that is too big, so it's telling me initially that it's too big. If I hit submit again here, you don't see the upload starting text 
and you can see in the console that this is because an error was thrown preventing that code from being run. Now finally, to extend the solution to multiple files that the user has selected on the file input element, the first thing that you want to do is to allow the user to select multiple files. So you do that by adding the multiple attribute to the HTML input element and then down inside the validate size function, what you're going to want to do is to calculate the size as being the size of all of the files that the user has selected. So to do that, I'm going to be commenting out the previous calculation of size. What I'm going to be doing instead is creating a variable with a starting value of zero and then adding the value of each of the files that the user has selected to that initial value of zero. So for that, I'm going to want to iterate through the files that the user has selected. So I'll do that with a for off loop and I'm iterating through input.files. So each time this loop runs, I'm going to want to increase the value of the size variable by item.size. So item each time is each of the files that the user has selected. And like before, I'm going to want to divide that result by 1024 to go from bytes to kilobytes. The only other change I need to make is just to the text to adjust for the fact that we now have multiple files. Now, if I test this, so I'm going to select both of these files. It will, of course, be over the limit. You see now that it's calculating the size of both files together and throwing an error if they are over the limit. If I select just this one, you see that we're getting the file size OK message and then the upload code is running. So in practice, your upload would start now. So that is it for this tutorial on how you can validate the size of a file or files before uploading. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.